Hey, beautiful seekers, welcome back to The Shift. If you're new, welcome, happy to have all of you. So, happy 2023. <laughs> happy new moon in Aquarius. This is a love reading for the collective of Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. I from the new moon in Aquarius. So you could say it's for the next month, for the season. I pre-shuffled, I pre-pulled. I did not look at the cards. We're discovering them together and working with the light seers to row. As I mentioned, this is the divine, the predominantly divine feminine energy. This is the predominantly divine masculine energy, aka woman, aka man. Place yourself wherever you see fit, however you see fit. And let's just dive straight into it. In her mindset, she has seven of cups. So this situation seems somewhat intriguing and potentially confusing to her. She sees all kinds of possibilities and potentials with him. But she's uncertain. Where does this all lead to? And I'm not picking up on distraught or a sense of being lost. It's just an aspect of an unknown that is starting to feel less threatening to her, which is interesting, this sentiment that I'm picking up on here. In his mindset, four of swords. So he's still cocooning. <laughs> He feels like he needs to gather more information, more knowledge. He needs more time to process, to understand. Another aspect of this is perhaps in her communication, she's not being clear. And he feels like there are things that he doesn't know about her or, does he, or that he doesn't understand. There's also a level of like I said in the beginning, cocooning, it's, um, there seems to be some sort of protection mechanism surrounding his mind. He doesn't want to be overwhelmed with questions, question marks, I'm sorry. He doesn't want to be confused. He wants to know where things stand, where he stands in the world and life and romance. And I don't see him actively currently saying anything that is clear because he wants to be clear. Does that make sense? In her heart, Ace of Cups. Wow, okay, so there's a lot of feelings coming through on the feminine side. It's like something about the heart is opening up. It's almost like when the mind understands the infinite possibilities of pretty much everything and is coming to terms with the unknown, not because it wants to be in an unknown, but because it understands that it can't grasp everything and that it's inevitable to be in some form of unknown in life. And once that settles in, there's a sense of serenity of coming to terms with something. And that give, gives peace and that gives ease. And the heart feels safer in a world that it doesn't try. And it, it feels safer in a world in which it doesn't try to compartmentalize and understand fully. Because nothing changed with the world. The world is still infinite amount of possibilities and unknowns, right? The empty space is so much vastly larger than matter. So that hasn't changed. What did change is her understanding of it and her and how she sees herself in relation to that. If you understand that something is what it is and you no longer try to change it, and that brings peace. It's not giving up. It's surrendering. Because life is bigger than us and so is love. And I'm seeing her heart just kind of melt into... Just 
acceptance. There's something very, very healing about this energy. It's also seven in one. It's a, it's a very, very, this is oneness consciousness with the Ace of Cups. It's very divine type of love. Right? It's only spiritual love. It's so open. It's so trusting. And it's so, be, because it's safe, because it sees itself as one with the divine. And God is safe. And so the mind feels free to explore the possibilities and the imagination without being overwhelmed or scared by it. It breaks down the divine into sub-divinities. You know, the fantasies, the imagination, the sentiments, how things could be, but in a hopeful way, you know, looking forward kind of way. Let's see what's in his heart. The lovers, wow. So there's a lot of emotion and a lot of love between these two. This is something of transcendence. Transcendental, how do you say that word? Forgive me. But specifically in this deck, the lovers doesn't speak as much about choices as it does in the Rider Waite or other decks. Here there's more reference to actual union, to actual, the choice that is already made as opposed to being on that crossroad. So the heart, his heart has already made a choice. You can also see the Star of David in between them. You see the upward tri triangle and the downward triangle. It symbolizes sky and earth, masculine and feminine. Polarities coming into in integration, right in between their minds. It's also the symbol of the chariot, um, the Merkaba, in Kabbalah that symbolizes tra um, transferring between human consciousness, between levels of consciousness. So there's incredible telepathic communication here as well. So they're both feeling it. And both four and seven are associated uh, with ancient numerology, with the vision for the future. Architecting for the vision seven, AKA envisioning the future. So it's like they both feel that it's very real and that it's very present, but their mind, they're having it in a, in a more of like, they keep it in the matrix field of like, okay, I feel this. I know this is real deep inside, but I still want to go by the steps, right? By the mundane 3D practical steps that can actually build this into reality as opposed to keeping it in the ether of potential. So I'm picking up on two very... Wow, this is incredible. So they're very much in alignment with the way they operate. Right? There's parallel, but it's in a, a very healthy, wise. Essence to each of them that, you know, that mirrors one another. So I'm not yet picking up on, I mean, we have more cards and it's all a human, a human journey after all. So we're going to see the you know the pitfalls i'm sure but as a foundation for this reading both these entities have come into a very mature spiritual aware place so this is wonderful to see this new moon in aquarius does ignite it does give us um, an insight into the journey of Pluto, the journey that Pluto is going to have in Aquarius for the next 20 years. So that is a very good sign for me when it comes to feminine and masculine energies and the potential of unions. It shows me that we have, we are really, really have been or are raising our frequency and bring ourselves to a place where Love is less and less of psychological 
needs to be fulfilled, psychological needs that are attempted to be fulfilled through the other person, right? It's less of that psychological gunk that we're journeying through via our relationship. And it's, we're transcending in, into more of a spiritual type of love. It doesn't negate the physicality and the sensuality and the passion. It adds to it and it brings us closer to unity with God, honestly. Because we're operating on a much higher wavelength, if that's the right word. Yeah. I also love seeing Ing specifically in this deck tattooed on her arm. English, it's like it's the tree, it's the roots. It's, it's, it's wanting to build. He wants to build something that is sustainable. He doesn't want to rush ahead. And I'm also picking up on him somehow feeling that he needs to give her a, a level of rest. I'm not sure how that plays out. Feel free to share with me in the comments if that resonates with you or if you understand what it means from your experience. And by the way, if you're feeling like you're not there yet or the, that this doesn't speak to you or, or this doesn't feel yours yet, yet. Again, it shows you where we're heading. So if you're here in this dynamic, amazing. But if you're not, this is where you're heading toward. Something to look forward to. What she gives, nine of swords. What he gives, ace of wands. Two aces. Okay. The feminine here seems to be very open with her pain, be it grief, be it trauma, be it disappointment, be it concern, be it her past. She doesn't seem to shy away from it. And the fact that she's expressing it to him shows me that she feels like it, it's a safe space. So in a way, it's a good thing. And his response to it is fascinating. Like the Ace of Wands here, it's like coming in with, it's it's very transmuting energy. It's like fire. So in alchemy, the first process in alchemy is burning matter down into its absolute molecular structure, into its dust, before you can reshape it into something different, right? In order to make to turn coal into gold, you have to completely destructure the coal, and you do it with fire. So it's almost like he's responding with a very transmuting alchemical type of energy. To her, it's like he, he he takes this pain, she expresses this pain, he takes it and he just burns it down. Not like in a harmful way, but in a in a very healing, what's the word? Again, the word ascension keeps coming to mind. I don't always use that word. I definitely don't use it lightly. Very phoenix, rising phoenix kind of. So far, he seems very evolved. We've had another reading that I did, a double pentagram, a few months ago, where the masculine that came through was very evolved. It's very, it's very nice to see. It's like, it's okay. It's a new start. He's like, he's expressing that it could be a clean slate, a new start, and, and they can create something out of nothing, which is a lot about with the Ace of Wands is a lot about that, you know, the Ace of Fire, the creation of something out of nothing, the spark of desire, the spark of will, it just brings life into the world. It's like, okay, you have all this pain. Let me chew it up and spit it out <laughs> or turn it into energy. It's something like that. But there's also on a more, more mundane level showing a lot of passion and a lot of desire. So maybe in his actions, he's very present or she can feel his warmth. She can feel his energy when he's next to her, but he doesn't necessarily say the words. Does that make sense? She feels like she stands on a ten of wands and he feels like he stands on the knight of swords. It's like she's, <laughs> this is beautiful. It's like she's, Heading toward him, like after a very long journey, you see the trail here behind her and the 10 of wands, like after going through 10 of wands and she's, 
on this path, on this journey, and and she's heading toward him. It's like this is a feminine energy that has been through a lot, that has seen a lot, you know, has endured a lot. The Nine of Swords, and it's almost like I, I'm picking up that in this Nine of Swords, like he's running to pick her up, kind of thing, like. Like she's heading toward him and he's like running toward her. This is, I did not expect this beautiful reading. I mean, I know we have more to unfold. It's like they're recognizing each other from a distance. And as soon as he sees her, you know, waltzing by, he just kind of runs to her. There's a lot of a lot of wanting and a lot of desire and a lot of active energy coming from this masculine. And it's like, but he's not saying the words. It's interesting. He doesn't express these sentiments. He just does. He physically does and he energetically exudes. Not yet anyway saying. But she feels all of it, you know, it's the ace of cups. So she feels this and this. Outside of their dynamic, she has another ace. Oh my goodness, we have three aces on the table. Ace of swords and two of cups. Interesting. Let's see what he has. The star and the queen of cups. Here's my conundrum. Both these could potentially show that both of them have other love interests or and or relationships or feelings for other people outside of this dynamic. That is if I just read the tarot as is. But intuitively, I'm not feeling that at all. So I'm just I'm taking a moment because I'm trying to see what else it's trying to tell me. Okay, I see. Thank you. So both, once again, mirroring each other in ways of expressing with their energy and with their mind and with their heart that they are ready for something true, ready for something real. There, This is, on his hand, there's his side, there's a lot of hope there's a lot of emotion. It's very deep feelings. It's, it's like meditating and talking to God. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or not. I don't know if he's actually practicing prayer or um, affirmations or conversation with spirit. Or it's something that his heart does naturally in his own way. But there is an incredible amount of love that is just existing in his world. And same with her, with the Ace of Swords and Two of Cups here. It's like the, her mind, her system, her mechanism is ready. It's like wired. It's like, it's like inviting partnership or inviting um, integration between duality. It's like inviting in something that is exterior to her to come together with her. I'm picking up on a very solitary um, energy throughout her life. And it's recently that something started to shift in her consciousness and she started to echo something different to the universe. If she used to echo solitude and journeying alone and, you know, the, the spiritual hermit kind of, kind of energy. And that, that's, that's what her life path then looked like and it, i'm not saying that it's a fault it's like it's probably what you know the way it was supposed to be but the echo is different now you know what the universe is picking up from her and i think that's is what is manifesting something like this it's like they're both speaking to the heavens and I'm not entirely sure if currently 
in reality, they are aware that they are the manifestation of, of this. Does that make sense? To one another. It's like, I feel like they're so in their human experience and very much in responding to the moment. Like, she shows up, he runs to, uh, to her. Um, she's going through something, she's expressing something difficult. He just energetically, naturally just kind of turns it into... <laughs> life force it's it's like it's so there's these events but simultaneously on an energetic level that there, there, there's like so much going on as well okay this represents recent past present future and potential before i unfold the cards to see what's uh coming up for us um we're going to take a 90 second break so have fun and I'll see you in 90 seconds. The Rota Aftar or Orat Torah Avatar, the wheel of life speaks the laws of love. Hello there, beautiful Tarochi Morgan, the existential shift here. You want to undergo a true spiritual quest, a shamanic journey, the path of the heart to discover the bunkai, the secret applications of tarot. You are so fed up with the superficial books you can find everywhere, with information that you can find everywhere. What about the deep stuff? from different cultures, different times in history. What about the other occult systems within it, like astrology, numerology, Kabbalah, Greek mythology? I've put all of it within 90 pre-recorded classes that I made just for you. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, hour long, within my own private living room with me. Feels like a one-on-one. -on -one. And you get to truly learn tarot. Just snap out of our human form. To snap out of being, you know, uh, defined by our astrological map, um, imprisoned by our karma, break through all of that, have a clean slate, tap into our most highest potential of our soul, just create our life. That is real work with the tarot. How it is done, I will explain. Okay, <laughs> let's not stretch this any longer and see what's up. Keep in mind, generally I'm, I'm focusing for the next month with the reading, although time is fluid, so we'll see what the cards say. So recent past between the two of you, we have Knight of Cups, beautiful. Present, we have Four of Pentacles. And going into this coming month, we have Page of Cups, and four of cups. So we have three fours. Okay. Three fours, three aces. We'll get to that part. Queen, knight, page of cups. So there's a family coming through. So there's possibly a child here in this situation. So I don't know if you have a child together or if one of you has a child. Um, but we'll get to it when I'll connect the cards in a different arrangement. So there's been, the way this has started or the recent past, something very, there's a romantic story to it, right? It's something very sweet, very organic, very authentic, like very open-hearted. Like I don't see like, you know, games or, power plays i just see a lot of sincerity and heartfelt communication maybe that's why she's so open in her heart space in the present with this four of pentacles like on one hand her heart space is opening up on the other hand it's like she's still holding it close you know and and not yet revealing her feelings it's not that she's putting it all out there and, you know, you can see it here, right? I don't see her saying to him, oh, I love you. I care about you. I want to be with you. I don't, I don't, it's like, you don't see it here. There's the sentiment and there's a guardian energy, like 
a very protective energy. Maybe there needs to be a level of trust that is gained first before she can speak. Because I see her feeling but not talking. They're both, it's like they're not, I see both of them having very deep feelings for one another, but not expressing those feelings. <laughs> but on one hand, but then on the other hand, there's a lot of, you know, fluid communication and connection. So that's, that's an interesting, that's an interesting dynamic. And at least for the next two weeks to, to one month, they're still, both of them are like keeping their feelings for themselves. It's more in the imagination and the fantasy and the hope, but there isn't much action taken. So it might make one of them feel a little bit insecure or doubting. I think it's the feminine that might go into a little bit of an insecure place that doubts if it's mutual or that doubts if there's something there because these are cards that don't speak, right? This person doesn't say what's on his mind. There's a lot on his mind, <laughs> like a lot, but it's like it's in, it, he keeps it in his own inner world and doesn't, now a lot of time, Page of Cups is an energy that, you know, it's, it feels all these things. You see the, the love here? shape so it's like he feels all these things but he assumes that the other party understands or knows what he thinks but no <laughs> so if you resonate maybe you want to take your inner world and maybe wear it more out on your sleeve when it comes to this person because this person seems to feel insecure and that that might be the reason why they're not opening up further because they're like, okay, I'm not sure what he's feeling or I'm not sure what he's thinking or like I'm feeling all these energies and like, but where are the words? I don't understand. Like I don't see a lot of communication here. So there is communication and there isn't communication. It's a little bit confusing. And I'm sure I'm picking up on what you might be feeling or what your person might be feeling. So I see this season as like working on processing the emotions and learning how to express them from the energy, through the heart, the mind, but then out from your mouth, you know? <laughs> Because the thing about the fours, they're tricky. Four of swords, if you stay stuck in that energy, it leads to five of swords. Four of pentacles, if you surrender to that energy, it leads to five of pentacles. Four of cups, if you surrender into that doubt, it leads to five of cups. Every single one of the fours, if they're not handled, you know, straight on, if they're left lingering, if they're dragged on, they turn into a loss into a heartbreak, into even further confusion. So this is when the tarot kind of giving you an alert, being like, this is where you're at. But if you keep this stagnating, keeping everything inside, but not expressing yourself clearly to one another, you know, it's, it's going to possibly create festering and sabotage and damage so there needs to be active communication in the next month of the advice that i if, if i take even just one advice from this it's like the person who's not expressing themselves who have all these feelings inside and shows up energetically but not expressing themselves with words they need to take it into the <laughs> into the realm of reality and speak up because the other person, especially if it's the man, especially if it's the masculine who's not talking, the feminine is, it's, con it's confusing. Like she feels him, but it's confusing to her on the outside. So, and another thing that I'm picking up, she's very interested in having a partnership. She's ready to have something very real, very mutual, very honest. She's ready to try. It's not like she's like jumping to, you know, two of cups, it's not already the marriage, right? It's the beginning, the first steps of union. 
but she's willing to give it a chance and go with it. And if she's so ready for that, but this keeps festering and not expressing itself in her reality or not, you know, it could lead again. I'm not seeing it yet. This reading for the next month. But the thing is, I don't want to see that happening because it seems like it could be a very painful lost opportunity if that happens. Now, we do have an insinuation for Pisces season because Page of Cups is, you know, water season, uh, technically Pisces, but it could be any water season. We also have Cancer energy here, Scorpio. All the water energies are on the table. I'm just looking at the cards, seeing, trying to see if I missed anything before I move on to the next step of this reading. Yeah, this guy needs to express himself. <laughs> it seems like he expressed himself more in the beginning, but it, it, it became more internalized. Okay, let's see what else we can gather. So. These are the aces, three aces. Now we also have the three fours, four of swords, four of pentacles, and four of cups. One, 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 four, four, four. Major arcanas, we have the lovers, the star. Wow, beautiful. This is this is this is very deep spiritual love. Possibly destiny. The star card and the lover. It's very like from spirit. Now the court cards, we have Knight of Cups, Page of Cups, and Queen of Cups. And also Knight of Swords. Ah, two knights. Okay. So there might be like two love interests, or it's the same person expressing himself or themselves in both a very active uh, matter and emotional matter, but it's kind of in contradiction to seeing them not talking or not expressing themselves. Two, seven, nine, ten. So these are the repetitions from the minor arcana. We're going to address them. And this will just be here in the background. Okay. Let me look at this for one moment. So the feminine is experiencing incredible levels of expansion and passion and renewal. And she's going through a very transformative, powerful, positive process that puts her 3D world, her reality on hold. Because there's such incredible transformation from the inside, everything else suddenly doesn't quite fit and needs to be reestablished. So there's a lot of confusion there because there are a lot of things that she's attached to and connected to from, you know, from her life experiences and from her journeys and what she's established and what she built for herself, be it relationships, work, how she perceives herself character wise, all these things. And it's like, I, I see her in the transition in the, in the bridge between who she was and who she's becoming. And it's like, there's still a little bit of holding on to the habit from a sense of, from a place of needing to feel safe. It's so much, there's so much evolution here all at once. And it's like, and, and there's so much thought process and emotions and, and desire that is, it's all together. It's like the only ace that I don't have, I always look at what I don't have. So if I have three aces, where's the ace of pentacles, right? It's not yet solidified in her reality and in, in her sense of self. And here we have swords, pentacles, and cups, whereas the four of wands, the actual coming together, the union, the living by who you are, you know. 
with balance and with um, with joy. So the four of wands is missing from the three fours and the ace of pentacles is missing from the three aces, which is ace of pentacles and four of wands. Imagine if we had them here, it would be an offer of relationship or stability or building a household or getting married or just being in a relationship or building something together that lasts, you know, something with four legs that is very that has a good strong foundation and, and a good potential for the future. It's it's that it's that fertile fertile soil, you know, that land um, to which you build a home from scratch. That's what Ace of Pentacles, Four of Wands is. It's also home. I'm picking up that there's an issue with the home. Again, because we're missing the Ace of Pentacles and the Four of Wands. So what's going on with home? Now, the soul is completely excited and expand, expanding and and cheerful and hopeful. It's like it, it it knows that it met its person. Some of you, you've met your person. This is your person, the person possibly, you know, and your soul is completely aware of it. And it's already like happening in other dimensions. But in reality, this is what we're experiencing. And it's never a one-sided game. You know, the other person, I see the masculine here. They're not there. Feeling, not expressing. Fantasizing, not doing. This could lead to a potential saying goodbye. It like starts off as such a beautiful potential, but someone might be too much in their head of how things can go wrong, wanting to control the situation to make sure that everything is planned and perfect and they understand exactly like what can go wrong and how they can avoid it. And it's like, you can't do that. It's not possible. Things can always go on, go, you know, happen amazing and things can always go wrong. There is no analyzing every single possible scenario and being ready for every single possible scenario. If you try to do that, you know, there's that phrase, um, man tracht und Gott lacht. Man plans and God laughs. The more you try to be in control of the possibilities of the outcome, the more you will lose control. The more things will go, you know, haywire to show you. Your own spirit will show you you can't do that. You're not meant to do that. You're meant to live. Yes, of course. Plan, think, be resp responsible, consider the consequences of your actions. That's That doesn't negate that. But that's not what I'm picking up. I'm picking up on analysis paralysis. And this feminine energy, I feel like someone, it's like an energy that has said goodbye so many times. This is a... This is a wanderer or a journeyer or a traveler or a gypsy. If she'll have to say goodbye again, she'll say goodbye again. It's in her system. But it's not what's meant to happen and it's not what spirit wants to happen. Now, again, free choice and all, listen to your heart. But if you listen to your heart and all you hear is their name, Tell them. Happy New Moon in Aquarius. I love you. Stay magic. Stay true. And I'll see you soon.